Since they are both stranded inside a freezing cave, Nick hugs our naked protagonists tightly to stay warm and survive. They begin to accept others' feelings and embrace them with passion, which causes Chin Tian's mini Chin Tian to wake up from its sleep, so he quickly pushes Nick away before she realizes that something is sticking out. But Nick won't let go of Chin Tian. As if she does, she will literally freeze to death. So instead of pushing her away, Nick cools down the mini version of him and continues to warm themselves. He notices that their wet clothes have dried up since the water on the clothes has turned into ice. Nick shakes off the ice from the clothes and sees that they have become completely dry. So both Chin Tian and Nick finally wear their clothes and begin to exercise immediately. Chin Tian explains to Nick that if they do exercise and move their bodies, the blood circulation will accelerate, and that will generate heat. After quick exercise, Chin Tian feels relieved but the little girl's big appetite starts to kick in. And it's no surprise since both haven't eaten for a long time. Jin Tian brings out the dead chicken that he conveniently had in his inventory and decides to eat it. However, since they have nothing to make a fire with, Jin Tian realizes that they have no other option but to eat the chicken raw. He proceeds to dissect the chicken and separate the meat to eat. But Nick gets hesitant about eating raw food as it could contain dangerous bacteria and parasites. Jin Tian assures her that she will be fine as the parasites in the meat are already frozen to death. He even compares the chicken meat with sashimi and makes Nick agree to eat the raw meat. Nick asks Chin Tian if they are going to eat the entrails and internal organs of the chicken, and in reply, Chin Tian tells her that if they eat raw organs that would increase the risk of parasite infection since parasites generally live in the animal's offal. However, Chin Tian talks about the possibility of eating the offal as the last resort if he and Nick stay longer in this cave. Chin Tian comes up with another idea to use the offal as a bait to attract wild animals in this snowfield, like seals, snowbirds, arctic foxes, and the most powerful being amongst them, the polar bear. Chin Tian tells Nick that a polar bear is more likely to fall for the offal bait as polar bears have a sharp sense of smell, which is seven times greater than that of dogs, and that is the reason why they can find food in these white snowfields. As for the snow foxes and the seals, they are omnivores and very timid. Chin Tian doesn't think that they will be attracted by the awful bait even if they smell the blood. However, if the polar bear does take the bait, it would also bring them some danger as Chin Tian isn't sure if he will be able to defeat one of the strongest animals on land. Both Chin Tian and Nick proceed to eat the raw chicken, and once Chin Tian takes a bite of the leg piece, he immediately spits it out of disgust. Nick reminds Chin Tian that eating this raw meat is the only hope of their survival, so without thinking much, Chin Tian takes another bite. He tries his best to swallow, but his body forces the meat out. Nick puts both of her hands on Chin Tian's mouth to make him eat the raw meat. She hugs Chin Tian, begging him to eat the meat as this is their only hope of survival. And in order to make her happy, Chin Tian ignores the disgusting taste of the meat and eats it. Later, while the snow is blowing outside the cave, both Chin Tian and Nick are panting for air. Nick particularly looks to be struggling to even move, and it has been revealed that they are just exercising to keep their blood flow going. While Nick does around 50 to 100 sit-ups, Chin Tian does 100 push-ups at twice the pace of hers. After the exercise session, Chin Tian notices that the weather is getting warmer, and the temperature is rising, so he decides to go out of the cave and see if it will be okay for them to go outside. After having a proper inspection, Chin Tian and Nick decide to leave this natural freezer, and Chin Tian takes the chicken's offal with him that is now frozen. They proceed to walk through the snowy mountain, but after some time, Nick begins to feel that they are just going around in circles. Chin Tian reassures Nick that they are going on a straight path thanks to his navigation. Nick feels exhausted and doesn't want to continue in this snowy illusion. Chin Tian motivates Nick to keep moving forward and tells her not to give up halfway to their survival. They continue walking, one step after another, when suddenly Chin Tian feels an itchiness in his eyes and his vision begins to get blurry. He realizes that something is wrong with his eyes, but he doesn't understand what is causing it. He decides to take a rest with Nick for now. After thinking for a while, Chin Tian assumes that he might have drained too much energy while exercising back then, and hence there is not any sufficient blood supply in his brain, which is causing his eyes to malfunction. Nick holds Chin Tian's hand and asks him if he is alright, but before he can answer, Chin Tian's vision gets completely blurred out and he basically becomes temporarily blind. Nick assumes that Chin Tian is exhausted so she offers to carry him from now on. But that's not going to happen because our protagonist is not a woman. Chin Tian checks the system's wild first aid collections, hoping to find some relative information in them so that he can figure out how to get over this situation. He closes his eyes and concentrates to look for the information in the wild first aid collection. After some time, Chin Tian finally finds the reason for his temporary vision loss. 
Apparently, this state is called snow blindness, which is a form of photokeratitis that is caused by UV rays, damaging the cornea and conjunctival epithelium. Basically, it's an illness that occurs when there is an excessively cold temperature that constricts the patient's eye's blood vessels or even freezes their cornea, and it can cause blurred vision, double vision, or even loss of sight. Chin Tian learns that the most probable way to tackle this illness is by going to a dark place or covering the eyes with an ice towel. The information says that the blindness will cure after several days once the damaged blood vessels have been replaced by new blood cells. However, Chin Tian is in no place to take shelter or rest for several days and so he begins to look for another way to cure himself. He finds out that fresh milk can be used as eye drops to cure the condition, and it can also relieve the pain. Chin Tian then learns that in an emergency the patient needs to use acupuncture or rub the points of Sibai, Hegu, and Neguan to relieve the symptoms. While the Hegu point is at the back of the hand, the Neguan point is at the wrist, and the Sibai point is right below the eyes. He also learns that repeated snow blindness will gradually weaken the vision and cause chronic eye problems and even permanent blindness. After learning all that, Chin Tian feels kind of lucky that he hasn't gotten permanently blind and decides to treat his symptoms. The only possible way to do so is to use a cloth to cover his eyes, as he is in no place to find other things to treat his eyes. Jin Tian cuts off a piece of his jeans and instead of covering his own eyes, he gives the piece of cloth to Nick. He tells Nick to cover her eyes with a piece of fabric and since the fabric is made of cotton, he is sure that she can see through it slightly. Nick asks him why he is making her do this kinky stuff in the middle of nowhere, and in reply, Chin Tian reveals that he has lost his vision temporarily, which is why he has given her the cloth as a protection for her eyes from UAV rays. He then tells Nick that from now on she will be his eyes and that he will follow her around. Nick again proposes to carry Chin Tian but knowing that she will drain a lot of energy if she does so, Chin Tian refuses. Nick mentions that the only reason they are not frozen to death is because they are constantly moving. So if Nick carries Chin Tian, he will freeze to death within minutes for not moving. Nick finally understands and becomes the navigator to guide Chin Tian out of the snowy fields. While moving onwards, Chin Tian realizes that if they run into any wild animals, they will be as good as dead. To prevent any unfortunate incident, Chin Tian quickly turns on the system menu to buy the Silver Wolf skill so that his eyes can recover in the shortest amount of time. The system opens up, and thankfully, unlike other times when it acted like it was visually present, this time the system has appeared directly in Chin Tian's head. He sees everything thanks to that and opens the shop menu to buy the Silver Wolf skill. After purchasing, Chin Tian sees that the stats of the Silver Wolf blessing are that if the host of this blessing has enough energy in him, he can improve his power to a certain extent several times to strengthen his physical function. Chin Tian quickly collects the blessing and receives it, making him surrounded by a huge red and white glowing aura. After using the blessing, Chin Tian's strength increases to its current limit, and he also begins to get warm because of the increased blood circulation thanks to the blessing. Chin Tian's pain in his eyes become relieved, although his vision doesn't improve. Still, that makes him feel glad that his gift works. Chin Tian realizes that the reason his vision hasn't increased is because the description of the Silver Wolf Blessing states that it doesn't recover the host's health, but rather improves the host's resilience. Seeing Chin Tian smile, Nick realizes that Chin Tian must be finally feeling better. She asks Chin Tian if he is feeling okay, and he claims to be just fine. So, they proceed to walk towards the end of this snowfield biome. Chin Tian knows that he cannot recover his vision now, but knowing that his blessing can accelerate his recovery, he realizes that his survival odds in the snowfields have increased greatly. Jin Tian notices the sudden drop in temperature and heat so he realizes that the sun is about to set. Apprehending the fact that walking anymore is no less than taking his own life, Jin Tian decides to stop for today and find a place to sleep. Both he and Nick dig up a snow cave like last year and manage to complete it just before sunset. Then, Jin Tian again hugs Nick to exchange heat, and while doing so, Jin Tian assures Nick that if they keep moving towards their destination at this pace, they will soon get out of this biome. After spending the night in the cave, the two head on their journey again, but they don't find their way out of the snowfields before sunset. So once again, Nick and Chin Tian make a snow cave for themselves, and before sleeping, they both exercise to keep themselves warm. While sleeping while hugging each other, Chin Tian wakes up as his nose begins to bleed, not because he is hugging a girl, but because of the sheer cold. It seems that even with the Silver Wolf blessing, Chin Tian's body can no longer hold on to itself so Chin Tian realizes that he must get out of the snowfield as soon as he can. He notices that his ears are also bruised up and explains that this is all due to the frostbite condition, which causes the skin to get damaged and damages the tissue because of the exposure to freezing temperatures. 
Chin Tian reveals that his ears got frostbite on the first day he came to the snowfields. According to Chin Tian, his ears stiffened at first and then got red, swollen, and blistered. Finally, the skin and the tissues began to break, fester, and then blacken. Chin Tian believes that his ears would have already become completely rotten if bacteria were able to live in this environment. He feels grateful for that at the very least. Then, Chin Tian sees that his vision has started to get better, yet his nose has completely broken down. He also notices that his feet have gotten swollen even though he is wearing boots and socks. His feet are so swollen now that he is not even able to curl the soles of his feet. He explains that even if he tries to move his feet slightly, that move brings him a very sharp pain, as if a knife is being stabbed through his feet. Chin Tian also notices that his entire back has turned red and chapped because of the frostbite. He touches the dead skins and feels like these would come off even if he touched them. Even the parts that were covered by warm clothes have begun to swell up, so it's clear to him that he wouldn't survive much longer in these conditions. But that's not the biggest problem for him. For Chin Tian, the most terrible problem is that the low temperature of the snowfields has damaged the physiological functions of his body. Chin Tian feels his strength depleting and realizes that his body is getting weaker. His stomach is also twitching now and because it hasn't adapted to consuming the raw meat yet. On the other hand, Nick Ha has also gotten seriously frostbitten. Nick has lived on the number two treasure island for several years in the past and has been influenced by the special magnetic fields there, which have made her much stronger than ordinary people because of science. But still, she has gotten frostbitten too. In addition, Nick's arm muscles that were sprained before have gotten worse because of the suffering she is going through recently. Chin Tian notices that Nick's entire shoulders have turned stiff, and he assumes that even a minor movement is causing severe pain because of that. Chin Tian also feels the immense heat coming from Nick's body and realizes that she also has a fever, and that makes him feel sorry for her. Suddenly, Chin Tian hears something approaching their snow cave, so he wakes up Nick, telling her to stay on guard. Chin Tian realizes that whatever is approaching them is attracted by the chicken's offal, and it's probably a snow fox or a snow wolf. Chin Tian decides to use this opportunity to capture the wolf or fox before it can get to them first. However, the animal is neither a snow fox nor a snow wolf, but a giant polar bear. Chin Tian sees the stats of the polar bear once it becomes visible. Apparently, polar bears are the biggest predators on land. They have huge and highly durable bodies, and they can reach 8.3 feet when they stand up straight. Their heads are smaller than those of other bears, and their ears are small and round. Their necks are longer and thinner than those of other bear species. And although the polar bear's skins are black because of their fur, they usually look white. In addition, these fierce beast's feet have five toes, and their front paws are so huge that they are suitable for swimming and walking even on thin ice. Moreover, the polar bears live in the ice-covered water area of the Arctic Circle. So, sometimes they will be forced to live on land for several months once the ice melts and cannot return until the sea surface freezes again. Even after learning all this, Chin Tian and Nick still decide to fight the polar bear and bring out their knives to attack it. The polar bear sends a deafening roar, but Nick remains unaffected and stabs both of her knives at the stomach area of the polar bear. Then, Chin Tian comes from behind and tries to stab at the back of the polar bear, but it blocks Chin Tian's attack with its hand. Chin Tian sees that his attack didn't even pierce through the polar bear's muscles, and that makes him realize how weak he has gotten. While Chin Tian is lost in his thoughts, the polar bear tries to smash Nick using its gigantic right arm. Nick barely dodges it, and Chin Tian uses the opportunity to attack with his knife with a boost from his jump, but Chin Tian fails once again to stab through the polar bear's thick skin. He falls back to make another plan to counter the polar bear. The polar bear turns around to see Chin Tian and gives him a dead stare, making him realize that he is now its prime target. Now that the polar bear has been instigated, it gets even more ferocious. Our protagonist seems to have just the plan to instigate it even more. He throws a snowball at the polar bear and because of that, the polar bear begins to chase him. Chin Tian explains that he only did that to distract the polar bear so that Nick gets enough time to run away. However, Chin Tian didn't expect that the polar bear would move so fast, as he saw the polar bear quickly catching up to him. He thanks his silver wolf blessing once again as he believes that he would have been defeated by the polar bear at the very beginning if he didn't have that blessing. The chase continues, and Chin Tian realizes that in this state, he will get worn out soon, and then the polar bear will catch up to him. In order to prevent that from happening, Jin Tian realizes that he must fight the polar bear with all his might and all the energy he has left inside him. Jin Tian turns around and brings out his dual knives once again. This time, Jin Tian quickly and swiftly cuts one of the eyes of the polar bear, giving it no chance to use a counterattack. Jin Tian reveals that because of his blessings and gifts, the polar looks slow, like a sloth in his eyes, and that is why he can move at a faster pace. 
Chin Tian proceeds to use his real strength and makes slashes everywhere at the polar bear's body. He makes several cuts at the back and at the front which makes the polar bear go mad and it tries to stomp on Chin Tian. Chin Tian easily evades the incoming attack, moves away and judging by the polar bear's reaction, realizes that he might be able to win this fight. The polar bear loudly roars once again implying that it is about to use its ultimate attack on Chin Tian, but instead the polar bear begins to run away from Chin Tian, which completely throws him off. He realizes that the polar bear made the gesture of attacking only to catch him off guard so that it could make its escape. However, Chin Tian isn't just letting the polar bear get away, he reveals that the polar bear has already eaten his chickens awful. So Chin Tian decides to murder the polar bear for revenge. He will get a lot of food as well, plus the polar bear's fur can also be used as a blanket to resist the cold. The prey becomes the hunter this time and Chin Tian begins to chase the polar bear. He controls his breathing, quickly reaches the polar bear and stabs it with his knife. The polar bear loudly roars in pain again, but it knows that it will die if it stays here so it begins to run away once again. Chin Tian cannot believe his eyes as he sees how tough the polar bear is, even with so many wounds in its body. Nick comes there and calls Chin Tian from a distance. Once Chin Tian unknowingly turns around, the polar bear uses this opportunity and tackles Chin Tian to the ground. Chin Tian realizes that the polar bear is smart, as it only pretended to run away and was looking for a way to attack him. But there's no time for any acknowledgement as Chin Tian is cornered by the polar bear which is ready to prey on him. But before the polar bear can attack Chin Tian, Nick rushes there and throws her knife at the polar bear's eye. In the meantime, Chin Tian quickly enters the system menu and purchases a new blessing. Once he receives the blessing, he suddenly gains the strength of a raging bull. Using his newfound strength, Chin Tian stabs the polar bear's neck and instantly murders it. But the polar bear falls on top of Chin Tian. Nick asks Chin Tian if he is alright and in reply, Chin Tian explains that he is only fine because the snow has cushioned the one ton's fall. Otherwise, he believes that he would have been crushed. Nick drags Chin Tian out from under the polar bear's dead body and they begin to cut open its stomach. After pulling out the intestines, both Chin Tian and Nick go inside the belly of the dead polar bear to take shelter inside, as it is warmer than the outside. After staying inside for some time, Chin Tian feels that the polar bear's body temperature is dropping. So they come out and decide to dig another snow cave for themselves. Chin Tian tells Nick that once they are done with digging the cave, he will give her a special gift. Nick eagerly digs the snow cave, waiting for the special gift from her crush. Once they are done digging, Chin Tian dissects the skin of the polar bear and makes an overcoat for him and Nick. Nick gets amazed at the craftsmanship of Chin Tian and calls him skilled, as the fur hasn't been damaged at all. She begins to play with the bear paw gloves and once again thanks Chin Tian for such an amazing gift. Chin Tian doesn't think it's a big deal and tells Nick that even she could do this if she had an idea about how the subcutaneous tissue of the polar bear works. Chin Tian reveals that he has also made a blanket using the fur of the polar bear and uses it to cover them. Nick gets shy by Chin Tian's sudden approach and hugs him once again before having a good night's sleep together. Before sleeping, Chin Tian laments how Nick got her arms hurt just to save him, and moreover, she has been suffering in this snowfield. He expresses his worries for her, as he is afraid that her fragile body will soon reach its limit in this barren Iceland. The next morning they begin to feel a lot better than before, and notice that their frostbite is fading away thanks to the new warm clothes. For today's task, Chin Tian begins to cut the meat of the polar bear, and while doing so, he tells Nick to open her mouth. Once she does it, Nick shoves something ball-like inside her mouth which makes her gag, and she asks what he put inside. As Nick begins to chew and crunch on it, Chin Tian reveals that it's just the polar bear's eye that she is eating right now. He tells her that a polar bear's eye contains many nutrients like fats, vitamins, lipopolysaccharides, fatty acids, collagen, and most importantly, water. He also hesitantly chews the other eye and tells Nick that because of the nutritional values, the eye is very good for health, although his mouth indicates otherwise. But the act doesn't last too long as Chin Tian is no bear grills. He vomits out everything and finally accepts the truth that the eye tastes awful. Even after seeing Chin Tian vomit, Nick doesn't worry much as this has become normal for them. Instead, she turns her attention to the polar bear meat and asks Chin Tian when they are going to leave. She even wonders if they should abandon such a delicacy in the middle of nowhere. Chin Tian expresses his desire to carry all the polar bear meat with him to their home, but unfortunately they just cannot do so. In this harsh, freezing environment, it's not a very sensible choice to travel alone, let alone with another ton of weight. But still, Chin Tian decides to take the best and most useful parts of the polar bear. Before setting out, the two of them rest again inside the snow cave, as Nick still hasn't recovered from her injuries. 
While Nick is sleeping, Chin Tian looks at her and smiles as he has also started to develop feelings for her. He knows how tired Nick must be and knows that just one day of sleeping is not going to be enough to relieve Nick's long-term tiredness. Unlike Nick, Chin Tian isn't very tired, as his resilience to the freezing temperature has improved thanks to the Silver Wolf Blessing. He looks at the system to find more useful blessings to tackle this hostile environment, and remembers how he spent a grand total of 11,000 points to purchase the Tough Ox Blessing to murder the polar bear. With that, Chin Tian was able to get the strength to pierce the polar bear's throat, even though he was exhausted. On the system menu, Chin Tian sees that he has received 10,000 points for making nitroglycerin last time, but now he has only 3,000 points remaining. Chin Tian feels disappointed to see that he is now basically broke, but still heads to the mysterious items section to see if there's anything new. There he finds many gift boxes of whole life experiences, such as the Snowfield Experience Pack, the Snow Forest Experience Pack, the Marsh Experience Pack, etc. Chin Tian notices that he only needs a thousand points to buy these packs, so he begins to wonder why the prices are so cheap. He soon realizes that the Snowfield, Snow Mountain, and Snow Forest packs were separated when they were originally united, and that explains why the prices are so low. Chin Tian curses the system for treating him as a fool, and tears up as he has fallen for yet another scam by the system. Still, Chin Tian is somewhat grateful, as these experience packs will help him save his life in this harsh environment. So, he purchases all three packs and the data begins to transport into his brain. Once the items have been distributed successfully, Chin Tian gains newfound knowledge as he has learned a lot in mere seconds. At first, he looks at his own snow cave and realizes how it can be improved in so many ways. For example, if he turns the ceiling into an arch-like form, that will make the cave more stable than it is right now. In addition, in order to prevent wild animals like the polar bear from coming to the snow cave, it is also important to make more exits to avoid being caught inside the cave. Chin Tian also realizes that it is not good to build a snow cave here in the first place because a pile formed by falling snow is different from a pile formed by the wind, as the latter is worse. Chin Tian becomes grateful again for having this experience pack and decides to buy all of it. However, since his points are low, he instead resides to save those points for the time being. Chin Tian feels much more confident in his ability to get out of the snowfield. He has found another piece of information according to the snowfield experience pack, and that is that one should not use an igloo or a snow cave for more than a few days, as the chances of these buildings collapsing increase every day. So after seven days, Chin Tian decides that he and Nick will go back on their journey. They pack their bags made out of animal fur and begin walking towards their destination. While walking, Chin Tian senses that the wind is getting weaker all of a sudden, and that makes him realize that he and Nick are getting closer to the center. The snow beneath them is knee deep, which is making it difficult for the two of them to walk. Chin Tian wonders if he can make a sled out of scraps and begins to look for the perfect materials to do so. However, he finds nothing, so he continues walking on the journey. After two days of walking endlessly, Nick notices something in the far distance. What she sees seems like a tree, so she asks Chin Tian if he sees the same thing. At first, Chin Tian sees nothing, so he assumes that Nick is having hallucinations, but once he takes a closer look, he realizes that it's not a tree, but rather something else. So he hurries up ahead to have a closer look, and when they reach there, they do find a tree that is completely dead. While Nick is disappointed to see just a dead tree, Chin Tian gets excited and hugs Nick. Chin Tian holds Nick tightly with a wide smile and reveals to her that this was the place he was looking for all along. Chin Tian gracefully approaches the dead tree and touches them with his right hand. He tells Nick that a tree in the middle of the snowfield means that they have entered the forest at the center of the snowfield in Area E7. However, Nick doesn't see anything close to a forest nearby, so Chin Tian explains to her that the lively forest must be up ahead and will only take them some more time to get there. But instead of rushing towards the forest, Chin Tian decides to get some rest first. He informs Nick that he is going off to get some wood that is scattered around to set up the campfire, and he tells her to stay there and get some rest. However, Nick isn't just a baby who is going to listen to whatever he tells her, so instead she decides to dig a snow cave once again. Chin Tian thanks Nick for being so cheerful and helpful at the same time and presses both her cheeks hard, showing how much he appreciates her. Then Chin Tian goes up ahead and begins to collect dead branches off the dead trees. He explains that these trees look like they have been dead for a long period of time. Since they are at freezing temperature, Chin Tian is certain that these branches do not have any moisture inside and are completely crisp, which makes these dead branches the best fuel to light up a fire. After collecting a pile of wood, Chin Tian heads back to their prior location and sees that Nick has already started digging the snow cave. Nick gets excited seeing her husband back and welcomes him back home. 
Qin Tian shows her the wood he has brought with him and tells her to cut these branches into small chips so that they can burn at a quicker pace. Qin Tian then scrapes some cotton wick out of a lighter. He explains that the cotton wick is an excellent ignition point as it is soaked in kerosene. He places the cotton wick on top of the wood and lights it up. It instantly begins to blaze and the two of them celebrate as they see fire after a long time. However, their celebration is cut short as the wind suddenly gets strong and begins to blow out the campfire. Qin Tian realizes that there is about to be another snowstorm, so he tells Nick that they should quickly complete their snow cave beforehand and move the campfire inside. So they get to work together, and after a great team effort, Qin Tian and Nick successfully dig the cave and bring the campfire inside. Nick sees that it's getting dark outside, so she asks Qin Tian if they should close the entrance since wild animals can ambush them once they are asleep. Qin Tian reassures her that nothing like that will happen as wild animals stay away from fire and tells her that they must keep the entrance open to make the smoke go out. He then asks Nick if she is feeling hungry, and in reply she tells him that she is starving. So, Qin Tian decides to cook something for her and brings out the polar bear meat from inside his bag. He gets happy as he and Nick no longer need to eat raw meat thanks to the campfire and begin to sizzle the meat on the fire like marshmallows. After some time, they both enjoy actual tasty and delicious meat, and Qin Tian apologizes to Nick for making her go through such tough times these couple of days. Nick makes Qin Tian understand that she doesn't feel bad if she is with him and tells him that even if she goes to hell with him, she will probably be fine. Qin Tian understands her feelings and begins to eat the cooked meat himself. He laments how he had to eat rubbery, raw, and disgusting meat all these days, and now feels relieved that he can finally taste a top-notch delicacy. After having their meal, Nick goes to sleep, but Qin Tian doesn't. He begins to tie a pile of wood and seeing that, Nick asks him why he is doing that. She offers to help him with his tasks, but Qin Tian tells him to go back to sleep and not to worry about it. Once he is done tying the wood, Qin Tian goes back to the bed and hugs Nick. Before sleeping, he assures her that they will have a good night's sleep tonight and tells her that they are going to set early tomorrow morning. The next morning, the two begin their journey once again and finally reach the taiga forest at the outskirts of the snowfields. Qin Tian didn't expect that the forest would be so far from their campsite and he reveals that it took them all day to reach this place. But he still feels happy, as now they are finally here. Nick wonders if this taiga forest is going to be the place where she will live with her future husband from now on. Although it's barren, Nick is glad that she can stay beside her lover, Qin Tian. After looking at the giant trees, Qin Tian appreciates how great the view is, and then decides to go and find the perfect place to spend the night as it's getting dark. They begin walking forward once again, and after some time, Nick sees that they have come to a place where there are already footprints of them on the ground, so she realizes that they have been going around circles all along and have gotten lost. Since the two have managed to make no progress, Qin Tian decides to end their journey today and proceeds to make their camp there. Nick doesn't see any strong snow on the ground, so she isn't sure if they will be able to make a cave since it is going to be impossible to dig a hole. Qin Tian tells Nick not to worry as he reveals he is not going to make a cave this time. He doesn't tell Nick what he is planning to make and instead assures Nick that she can leave everything to him. Qin Tian then brings out his knife and with that, he begins to chop down a small tree. He then tells Nick to gather some branches from the fallen tree. She begins to collect all the branches, even those that have leaves on them. Qin Tian also collects some branches of the same size and portion, and piles all of them together. He finally reveals to Nick that he is planning to build a house and promises her that they will be able to make it using these branches. But they are going to need more branches, so Nick decides to gather everything, telling Qin Tian to leave everything to her. But still, Qin Tian helps her and they gather tons of Y-shaped branches and pile them up together. After that, the two use a giant log as the roof of their triangle-shaped house and then put all the Y-shaped branches on top of the log in the opposite direction, giving them shelter from both sides. But the gaps between the leaves are still wide, so Qin Tian comes up with the idea to use the snow to fill the gaps between the leaves. After doing that, he sees that the cold winds are no longer blowing in from behind, so the heat is stored perfectly inside. The two of them then enter their DIY house, and Qin Tian reveals that this design of the house was similar to the design when he made the first camp on the number 2 treasure island. But the main difference, according to Qin Tian, is that this place is Area E7, and the one with him is not Elin but Nick right now. Speaking of Elin, he wonders how she and his other side chicks are doing right now. However, Qin Tian doesn't have time to think about them, as he needs to spend all his precious time with this side chick, Nick. He lights up a campfire, sits with Nick, and takes a rest together while hugging each other. Nick feels something itchy inside her nose suddenly and notices that blood is coming outside of it. 
She turns around to show Qin Tian her nosebleed, but she sees that Qin Tian's nose is also bleeding, which surprises her. However, Qin Tian doesn't think this is anything serious and explains to Nick that the only reason their noses are bleeding is because their bodies are failing to adapt to changes in temperature. According to his hypothesis, after their bodies become warmer, the blood rate has accelerated, and the capillaries in their noses, which are originally contracted and fragile due to cold, have ruptured. And because of the rupture, their noses began to bleed. Jin Tian then reveals the basic medication needed to treat this condition, and tells Nick that she just needs to cool her nose with snow. He even demonstrates it by rubbing snow on his face, so Nick goes to try it as well. But before she can pick up the snow, Nick's left arm begins to shiver in pain because her hand is still injured. Qin Tian helps her and uses his two fingers to rub the snow on her nose, telling her not to move a muscle. He also tells her to get some rest as they can finally relax now. Nick understands and later falls asleep on the lap of Qin Tian. He pities Nick and decides to do the night watch tonight since she is badly injured. Although the two haven't run into any other wild beasts other than the polar bear along the way, Qin Tian believes that they are far from the safe zone. He doesn't think that the taiga forest is totally safe and is certain that there must be wild animals hiding around them in silence waiting to prey on them. Later at midnight, Qin Tian's eyes begin to shut on their own. He knows that the chances of encountering any danger are small but they are still not zero. So he must be on night duty, otherwise if an unfortunate event occurs it will be life-threatening. That is the reason why he cannot let his guard down after all the hardships that he has been through. But as Qin Tian keeps repeating the sentence, I can't let my guard down, he lets his guard down and falls asleep. After some time, Qin Tian wakes up to the noise of the wood burning and immediately looks down to see if Nick is safe first. He realizes that he only fell asleep because he hasn't kept himself busy. So Qin Tian decides to think about something rather than staring blindly. Qin Tian chooses the past events as the topic and begins to think about how he had a video call with Elin before the right energy ran out. But they didn't know how big the world was, and even if they knew Nick and Qin Tian were still alive, it would be too difficult for them to get here. He remembers how Nick and he were caught in an ocean current that went back and forth between the two areas. He believes that if there were no tributaries with the current, he and Nick encountered, then Elin and the other girls might have followed it here to look for them, but if there were any tributaries, or if Nick and Qin Tian drifted here because they were out of the current on the way, he assumes that Elin and the others won't find them, and the only hope to leave this place is by traveling alone. Either way, based on their current situation, Qin Tian believes that it is impossible for him and Nick to get out of here with a short plan. He realizes that he needs to make a plan to live here in the barren lands for a long time. Currently, they can get water by melting snow using fire and even have enough food rations thanks to the polar bear. So, there's nothing for them to worry about for the time being. Keeping warm is the key in this low temperature environment, and this DIY woodhouse is helping them do so. However, the shed is too small for the two of them to have a good night's rest. And besides, it's not even solid. If any large beast gets hostile, it can destroy the shed very easily. Judging by the time and date, Qin Tian also realizes that it's summertime and the temperature here is still not too hot. He understands that if they stay here until autumn, the temperature will decrease even more. That gives him more reason to build a proper house in order to protect himself and Nick from cold winds and wild beasts. He also needs to find a way to hunt animals so that he can make better clothes. Otherwise, they might get frozen to death or worse, become vulnerable to diseases. Qin Tian also decides to make weapons to hunt wild animals. The next morning, Qin Tian puts the fire out and wakes up his waifu, Nick. She still feels sleepy, so Qin Tian tells her that if she wants, she can sleep a little longer. Seeing Qin Tian's tired face, Nick realizes that he might not have slept at all, so she stands up and claims that she too does not need any sleep. Her hand begins to hurt again and she screams in pain. Qin Tian gets worried, tells Nick not to move, and promises to help her get relief from the pain. He realizes that her motion is restricted because of the strain in her left hand, which gets stiff whenever she is trying to move. To get Nick relief from the pain, Qin Tian tells her that he is going to take off her clothes now since she cannot do it herself. After taking off Nick's top, Qin Tian begins to massage her neck and back softly. He explains that he is only doing this because he has learned from wild first aid collections that massaging helps to relieve the strain. Since Nick is restricted from moving because of the strain in her hand, he is massaging her vital neural points to make her feel relief from her pain. Nick asks Qin Tian if there is any other way to treat her condition other than massaging her, and in reply, Qin Tian tells her there isn't. However, he reveals to us with an evil smile that there are indeed other treatments available, but all of them require drugs, which are hard to collect right now. That is the reason why he can only give Nick a massage to relieve her pain and accelerate her recovery. 
He says that in the case of shoulder and hand strain, the massage therapy of traditional Chinese medicine is mainly about acupressure, dredging the meridian zone and swiveling the shoulders. It can also be used to relieve spasms in the shoulders and arms. Dredging the meridians means flicking the channels around the shoulders to remove stasis and relieve pain, while swiveling the shoulders is to make the patient bend their elbows, lift them from a lower place in front, rotate outwards, and then put them. This process needs to be repeated three to five times for the effects to apply. Moreover, acupuncture can be used to stimulate other muscles around the shoulders as well, so it's a perfect massage method to treat any stress. After massaging Nick thoroughly for an hour, Chin Tian tells Nick to lay on the bed and get rest from now on. She apologizes to Chin Tian for worrying him so much and regrets becoming a burden to him. Chin Tian makes it clear that in no way Nick is her burden, and instead he thinks that she is the only reason why he is alive right now. He tells Nick about the time when he became temporarily blind and she let him out of there. If she hadn't done that, he might have been frozen to death on the snowfield. Additionally, when the polar bear attacked them, it was also Nick who saved Chin Tian at a critical moment. So, he expresses his forever gratefulness to Nick, and again tells her not to consider herself a burden. He tells Nick that he needs her beside him, and all she needs to do from now on is recover by taking rest. Nick blushes at hearing such kind and warm words coming from Chin Tian, and thanks God for letting her find such an admirable man. On the other hand, Chin Tian brings out the cooked meat from last night from his bag and begins to eat it without even reheating it. He explains that although it's cold, the meat is still edible, so he is fine eating the cold, hard meat. After eating, Nick decides to do the primary work to build a house as he planned last night. He explains that a house can keep both him and Nick warm and defend against beasts. But then something clicks in his head, and he remembers that there is another thing he needs to make before building a house. He chops a wood log and then makes a wooden mug out of it by burning the insides of the log with a boiling rock. After refining everything and giving it the finishing touch, Chin Tian fills the wooden mug with ice and puts it beside the campfire to melt the ice. He explains that since he and Nick haven't had any water in days, this would be a great chance for them to finally have proper drinking water. Although the water is hot, it's not nearly hot enough for Nick's appetite, so she tells Chin Tian to make it even hotter. But Chin Tian cannot do that, as he explains that it would take him a little extra effort. But to heat water even more, Chin Tian would only need some stones because if he uses the stones as a heater, he can boil the water even more. However, except for trees and snow, there isn't a piece of stone here. There is another option of boiling the water right on top of the fire, but if he does so, the wooden moo will burn on fire and over time it will turn into charcoal and break apart. So they must work with warm water from now on. After drinking fresh water, Chin Tian tells Nick to take a rest again and leaves her sight to get something. He begins to wander around the nearby areas as he intuitively feels that he has missed something important. However, he cannot figure out what it is. Chin Tian wants to go deeper into the forest, but he knows that if he goes too far, he might not be able to come back in time in case Nick runs into any danger. So instead of looking for the thing that Chin Tian's intuition is telling him to look for, he turns on the system and decides to learn more from the experience packs. He sees the Snowfield experience pack that he bought before and feels grateful for it. As thanks to the pack's guidance, he was able to get out of the snowfields. Now that he and Nick are in the snow forest, he realizes that it is the right time to buy the snow forest pack to adapt to the conditions here. He eagerly purchases the pack, and the information inside begins to distribute inside Chin Tian's brain. Once the process is done, Chin Tian instantly realizes what he has missed. He finally begins to see that the resources in this vicinity are very poor. Because of the lack of edible plants, there are no signs or footprints of any living animals anywhere around. He realizes the only reason this place is barren is because it is on the edge of the actual forest, where there might be actual food. So, he cancels his plan to build a house and decides to go even deeper into the forest with Nick to find a suitable place to live first. Only after can Chin Tian consider building a house once again. But before moving again, Chin Tian wants to make some preparations first. He plans to collect some white birch wood, which is one of the cold-resistant trees. It occupies one-third of taiga forest and the other two-thirds are pine and fir trees. It's kind of a mingled forest here, but that doesn't matter to Chin Tian. What matters to him are the white birch trees. He begins to peel the skin off the tree with the hope of finding something inside. After looking for a while, Chin Tian finally finds the gooey thing that he needs. Apparently, to get through the winter season, the white birch begins to collect and store nutrients at its roots until autumn, and when spring comes, it grows rapidly with these gooey nutrients. This nutritious sap is rich in vitamins, minerals, polysaccharides, and trace elements like iron, magnesium, potassium, calcium, phosphorus, and zinc. That is why Chin Tian is collecting the sap to use it as a detoxicant. 
Apparently, the sap has an anti-tumor effect and protects the human liver. So, basically, it plays an important role in the protection of the cardiovascular system, helps avoid allergies, and enhances the immune system. Qin Tian sees that there aren't enough to harvest, so he decides not to do it and instead cuts a lot of wood with his knife. He plans to transport these pieces of wood back to their base. As he carries some of the wood back to the base, he sees that Nick is still fast asleep. Qin Tian begins to process the wood that he brought and makes more wooden cups out of it. He explains that he only made more cups so that he could have several cups of water in shots without waiting for a while to take the next one. In addition, Qin Tian claims to have remade the snowshoes, as the old ones were made of broken bones and bound with small intestines that were too rough to stand on. The days pass quickly as Qin Tian puts his focus on building his house alone. For the next few days, while Nick sleeps all day, Qin Tian builds a new and more comfortable house for them to live in. Although he feels extremely depressed as he has no one to talk to since Nick sleeps all day, he is glad that she is recovering at a good pace. Qin Tian carries Nick to the new house, which is a sledge, and thankfully, it is big enough to fit both inside. So, Qin Tian no longer feels worried about whether Nick will feel claustrophobic or uncomfortable. Once she is asleep again, Qin Tian goes out of the sledge and reveals that this house can also be used for transport. It's basically a wagon, and Qin Tian, its horse, begins to pull it deeper into the forest area. Qin Tian explains that in order to reduce the inertia, he has added more sledge blades and added more mechanical things that have greatly reduced the friction between the snow and the sledge. Qin Tian mentions that he can only pull such a heavy sledge thanks to his blessing named Tough Ox. But even after using the Tough Ox to move the sledge, Qin Tian has discovered that this blessing can only stimulate the potential of his body and cannot empower him. Since his strength is still within the reach of humans with the powers he has now, he can arm wrestle with Kata, but he still feels tired when sleeping and needs to take a break occasionally. It is like an ordinary person carrying a large watermelon. Although he can carry it, he cannot do it for long as he would feel tired. Qin Tian pulls the sledge towards the forest, and after some time he decides to take a break for now. As the sun is setting, he lights up a campfire and thinks that the pace of moving is too slow since they haven't reached the edge of the forest yet. But Qin Tian feels fine with the slow pace, as he will no longer need to build a house once they reach the deep ends of the forest, since they already have a transportable house. Nick finally wakes up and comes out of the sledge looking for Qin Tian. He turns around and invites Nick to have some fresh food for dinner. While eating the polar bear meat and drinking water, Nick asks Qin Tian where they are right now, and in reply, he tells her that they are still at the edge of the forest periphery. Realizing that their pacing is too slow, Nick offers to help pull the sledge as well, but Qin Tian knows that she can do absolutely nothing unless she gets her arms fixed up, so he tells her that she can help in every way once she is fully healed. Moreover, it's not worth making Nick struggle if it just leaves her in a condition that will be the consequence of her previous injury. Everything gets silent as Qin Tian suddenly realizes something while eating. He hurriedly gets up and tells Nick to keep an eye on her surroundings as he explains to her that he will be going away for a while. He then rushes into the woods and reveals that he is going through what is commonly known as loose motion. Once Qin Tian is done going to the bathroom, he comes back feeling all better. But once he reaches their campsite, Qin Tian's belly begins to rumble once again, so he rushes back telling Nick not to worry about anything. The going back and forth continues for one hour, and once everything is out of Qin Tian's body, he finally feels better. He realizes that he must have eaten something bad and wonders what it might be. He knows that it's not the chicken meat or the polar bear meat, since this condition would have happened days earlier if there was any problem with those. Also, the food is less likely to go bad at this freezing temperature. So, Qin Tian realizes that, apart from the meat, the only thing he has consumed is water. He remembers a hint in the forest experience pack that clearly states that if water is nowhere to be found in the snowfield, people can melt snow into water to meet their body's needs temporarily. However, the pack forbids the host to drink snow water frequently, as it contains unfiltered viruses and bacteria. Moreover, snow water lacks minerals, so even if people take it after boiling, it can still cause abdominal distension, or worse, diarrhea, which is the case for Qin Tian. So Qin Tian stops spitting out the water that he was about to drink and tells Nick that they can no longer use snow water as their main source of water anymore. He explains that since they have failed to boil the water, the bacteria are still living in it and will cause them many diseases if they keep drinking it. Qin Tian comes up with an idea to boil the water and preheats his sword on top of the fire to use it to boil the water. He explains that he only used this method before because his sword would break if he kept repeating it, but now he must do it. Otherwise, both will fall into a vicious circle of diarrhea, and that will deteriorate their survival chances. 
After boiling the water, Chin Tian adds some pine leaves inside to make a pine tea and begins to drink the fresh tea alongside Nick. The next day, Chin Tian makes a wooden shovel and digs the ground to find some stones so that he doesn't have to use his sword anymore to heat the water. After collecting a few, Chin Tian then begins to pull the sledge again. After traveling for a while, he sees a moss on the roots of a tree, so he begins to eat it and even offers some to Nick. Will the two lovebirds find their way back to their group? Please read the pinned comment about the next part.